Welcome to the Gospel of Truth. I'm Alan Jackson, bringing to you spiritual songs and hymns and the power of the spoken word of God. First of all, giving thanks to God Almighty for blessing me with this another blessed privilege to come to you in his name by way of this television medium and to bring to you another message from his holy and divine word. And as I always do, I'd like to continue to express my appreciation and my gratitude to the production staff for their continued service to the gospel truth. And it's my prayer that God will continue to bless each one of them with those things that he knows that they are standing in need of. And I'm praying on your behalf as participant observers. And it is my prayer that God will continue to bless you and your family and to uh, bless you with those things that he knows that you're standing in need of as well. And then, of course, I encourage you to pray on my behalf because I'm also standing in need of prayer, and it's only God who can provide me with those things that I am standing in need of. And so we're going to do as we always do. We have our uh, prayer list, a song, and then we have the message. We encourage you to write to us, to send to us the names of your friends, your relatives, and your loved ones. We will add their names to the prayer list. I'll pray for them, encourage you to pray for them, and everyone in the viewing audience to pray for them as well. So we're going to continue right now with our prayer list. We're praying on behalf of Annette Jeffrey, Geraldine Keys, Emma Jean Hayes, Elizabeth Adams, Yvonne Davis, uh, the Ahmad Aubrey family, the Brianna Taylor family, Teresa Watson, Virginia Daniels. We're also praying on behalf of Deborah Price, Teresa Wanzo, Joe Broco, Brother Josie Pitt Sr. and family, Sheldon Horton, Nancy Lagarde, the Richard Brooks family. We're also praying on behalf of Shelley Lopez County and Cornelius County, Jacob Blake and family, the Daniel Prude family, uh, the Riley, the Flowers, and the Gillum family. We're also praying on behalf of Perlene Jesse. Candace Powers, Terrence Bailey, Wilma Carpenter, Sherry Drumgoo, Betty Williams of The Connection, Bethany Williams, Benita Coates. We're also praying on behalf of Susan Gilmer and family, Mary Marbury, Dorothy Lofton, Brenda Williams. Uh, we're also praying on behalf of the George Floyd family, Vincent Jones Jr. We're praying on behalf of Ayanna Rose. Praying on behalf of Dudley Sankey, Jesse Stevenson Jr., and Sylvester Stevenson Sr., Ursi Joyner, Curtis Porter, Chinhen Jim Pitch, Darnell Red, Ronald Gleaves. We're also praying on behalf of Curly Jones and family, Valerie Sankey, Pat Malbro, Missy Williams, Willis and Norma Taylor, Wilma and Harry Kellum. We're also praying on behalf of Myra DuVore. Gary Gassaway, Ralph Edward Stewart. We're also praying on behalf of Campbell Yarbrough, Reggie Brown, Willa Mae Willard, Norvell Edmondson. We're also praying on behalf of Weldon Rucker, Louise Harris, Augustine Red, Damar Hamlin. We're also praying on behalf of Eddie Lankford, Gwen Hill, David Alexander, Sean Alexander, D'Angelo Glee. Patricia, we're also praying on behalf of Gerard Herndon, Jean Alexander, Robin M. Williams, we're also praying on behalf of Jerome Holloway, Dion Sanders, Alondra uh, Vonda Morris, Shirley Burnell, and Jermaine Minor. We're praying also on behalf of Othery Christian, uh, Donald Drumgu, Delois Alexander, Bakari, and Juliana Akil. District Attorney Pamela Price, Congresswoman Barbara Lee, Pierre Drumgu, we're praying on behalf of Michelle Dean, uh, Robert Collins, and Vanessa Collins, Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin, Thelma Gooch, we're also praying on behalf of Rodney Dickens, Jerome, excuse me, that's Jeremy Drumgu, and Katie Markham and family, Maurice White, we're praying on behalf of Muriel Ishman, Jimmy Carter, Rosetta Walker, Shirley Valmore, Helen Thomas, Leicester Busby. We're also praying on behalf of Fred Franklin, 
H.G. Phillips, excuse me, that's H.J. Phillips, uh, Vice President Kamala Harris, President Joe Biden, uh, Elder John R. Bradshaw Sr., Flora Williams, we're also praying on behalf of John Martin, uh, Philip Angelo Blackman, uh, Wanda McCree, her sister and brothers, Kevin, uh, Keith, and Phyllis, and uh, Marjorie Stanford. And we're praying on behalf of the bereaved families, the James Earl Jones family, we're praying that God will comfort them during this time of their bereavement, uh, Brenda Williams, and we're also praying uh, for her during the time of her bereavement with the loss of her brother, and then uh, Elisa Tarkington with the loss of her cousin, uh, Michelle. So we're praying that uh, all these families will be comforted during this time of their bereavement. And if you would just be kind enough when you pray, if you don't remember their names, that's all right. God knows who they are. But if you would be kind enough to utter in your prayers those on the Gospel Truth Prayer List, that will be sufficient. God knows who they are, and they will be blessed according to his riches and glory. And you'll be blessed also as a result of you praying perhaps on behalf of people that you don't know. And you can send those names to the Gospel Truth at P.O. Box 3944, Berkeley, California, 94703. Or you can call the prayer line at 510-848-8843, and there you can leave the names. Or if you have a Bible question that you'd like to have answered, uh, you can raise that question and we will answer it for you on the air. All right, so now before we get into the message, I do have Dorian Paul Williams standing by, and he's going to be singing for us tonight, Thank God for Today. So without any further remarks, Dorian Paul Williams, Thank God for Today. Worrying about tomorrow. tomorrow. Just wanna thank God for today. Today, I can't get caught up with the bills and problems. Cause your luck around and many years have passed away. You can't go forward looking backwards. Whatever that was, that's what it is. Yeah. All you can do is try to do better. Embrace your courage and be proud of her. And most of all, thank God for today. For today, I get another chance to say, oh, Thank God for today. Oh, yeah. You gotta take the time to smell the room. Take for granted anything. Oh no. Wake up with a smile, hug and kiss the babies. Yeah. Uh, for this is the day that the Lord has made. Oh, oh. You can't go forward looking backwards. Whatever that was, that's what it is. Oh. All you can do is try to do better. Yeah. Embrace your courage and be prayerful. And most of all, thank God for today. Today, yeah. Oh, 
attention to the book of Matthew, the 13th chapter, verses 34 and 35. And the Bible reads, All these things spake Jesus unto the multitude in parables, and without a parable spake he not unto them, that it may be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. So it is from these verses this evening that I am selecting for a subject, Jesus and a parable. Jesus and a parable. It was on one occasion that John the Baptist looked and saw Jesus coming in his direction, and he stated, Behold, the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. That's John 1 in the verses number 29. This is the Jesus who said, The thief cometh not but for to steal and kill and destroy. I come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. John 10 and 10. This is the Jesus who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. John 14 and the verse 6. And this is the parable uh, that was spoken by Jesus. This is the book of Luke, the 18th chapter, verses 9 through 14. And the Bible reads thusly. And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves, that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up to the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican, 
standing afar off, would not lift so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote him, smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you that this man went down to his home, to his house, justified, rather than the other. For every one that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. So this evening we're looking at a subject entitled Jesus and a Parable. Jesus and a Parable. Now, Jesus taught this lesson using a parable. Of course, a parable is a story used to illustrate uh -huh, a moral or a spiritual lesson as told by Jesus in the gospel. And the purpose of it was to condemn self-righteousness. Self-righteousness is the belief that one's own actions, beliefs, or affiliations are more virtuous than those of others. Uh, it can also be described as a narrowly minded moralistic attitude. Now people who are self-righteous may have a holier-than-thou attitude. They may judge and scrutinize others and be intolerant of the opinions and belief of others, and they think that they can do no wrong. These are those that trusting in them, trusted in themselves and those who despised others. So he spoke, Jesus spoke this parable to those that needed this lesson. Now in our discussion, we're going to see the similarities both the Pharisee and the publicans. And you're going to find that there were some similarities. Now, first of all, both of them went to the temple. All right? Both of them were religious, and both of them uh -huh, were Jews. Both of them called on God through prayer. Both of them uh -huh, represented different classes. The Pharisee represented a very strict religious sect. The publican was a tax collector. Now, the Pharisee, uh -huh, he possessed some fine qualities. He went to a place to worship. He went to the place to worship, uh, the synagogue. He prayed and he spoke to God. Then he went on to explain to God that he was not like others. He was not as the extortioner, and he was not unjust, he was not an adulterer, and he was not like the publican. So, he talked about himself to the Lord in his prayer. Then he listed his good qualities, or his good points. He said, he fasted twice in a week, and then he gave tithes to all that he possessed. However, he was not justified in God's sight. Now, just because one is religious does not make them right. Pride, self-righteousness, etc. can destroy a person. Now let's look at the public. All right? He too went to the temple. Uh -huh, and he went there for the purpose of praying also. He did not even lift up his eyes to heaven. Uh -huh. But what he did was he smote himself on the chest and he said, Lord, have mercy upon me, a sinner. All right? And so with that, he prayed. And uh, he recognized that he was a sinner. And that's how he approached God. Not about I do this, I don't do this. I'm a sinner asking for mercy, all right? And it was that, on the basis of that, how he greeted and talked to God. Now let us see some lessons that we can learn from this particular parable, all right? First of all, those who exalt themselves shall be abased. That means if you lift yourself up, you're going to be brought down, all right? No doubt you know some people like that, all right? Uh, and then we find 
find that those who humble themselves, all right, humble yourself in the mighty hand of God, and then He will lift you up. And that's how that thing works. Now, there are many Pharisees today, but just a few publicans. Now, oftentimes we hear Pharisees today uh, say different things. For example, uh, I'm a Christian too. Or, I don't do this and I don't do that. I have been baptized. I am a member of a church. I believe in God. And I go to worship. So again, just because a person is religious, that doesn't make them right. So, many feel better than others, but yet they won't even uh, go to worship with them. They won't even take the gospel to them. So you see... It's not enough just to be religious. One must be right with the right attitude. One must be a Christian. Now, as I bring the lesson to a close, you need to take into consideration the question, are you a Pharisee or a publican? Mm -hmm. Remember what Jesus said? He said, only the humble uh -huh, will be Exhausted. Just keep in mind that if you go around lifting up yourself, then you can't expect a downfall. Now you can come to Jesus tonight by faith. Well, how do you get this faith? Romans 10, 17 says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So you heard the word, you believe it. Repent of your sins, confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and then be born again in the liquid grave of baptism mission of your sins. And by doing those things, the Lord will add you to his body, which is his church. And then if you live a faithful life, he will save you in the end. Just keep in mind that this is the Jesus who left his home in glory, came down to this low land of sin and sorrow. He hung bread and died on the cross of Calvary for your sins and for mine. We taught practical lessons that would help us to be good moral men and women on this earth. But we need to recognize that there are those who will put you down because you don't think like them or because they think they know more than you. So keep this in mind that this lesson was taught. Jesus taught this because there were people who considered themselves better than others. Okay, So we need to recognize that as a result of you coming to the Lord and being baptized and added to his body, which is his church. And then if you live a faithful life, he will save you in the end. Remember, as he left his home in glory, he came for the purpose. His father sent him uh, that he might save his people from their sins. Matthew one twenty one. And she shall bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. And how was Jesus going to save his people from their sins? Well, he went to the cross of Calvary for the purpose of purchasing his church. Remember, he said, I'm going to build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So, while he was on the cross of Calvary, uh -huh, bleeding, dying for your sins and mine, they tell me that there was a thief on the right and a thief on the left. When they came to the thief on the right, they broke his leg. When they came to the thief on the left, they broke his leg. When they came to Jesus, he was already dead. So they pierced him in his side, and forthwith came blood and water. Now the old preacher says the water was for the washing, and the blood was for the cleansing. Nevertheless, forthwith came blood and water. And as a result of that, that's what Jesus did. He purchased his church with his own blood, dying on the cross of Calvary. And he established his church. He promised, he said, I'm going to build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That's over in Matthew 16, 18. And he had given instructions to his apostles before he left them. He said, now look, I want you to wait for me over in the city of Jerusalem. And then when you get this power from on high, then, uh -huh, then you will know that the day has come for the church to come into fruition. And as a result of that, uh, the apostles did as they were instructed. They were in one place and one accord. And that's according to Acts, the second chapter. And the 
Bible says, and then suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. The Bible says that every known nation under heaven was gathered in Jerusalem. I believe it was Parthians and Medes and Elamites, dwellers in Mesopotamia, uh, Cretes and Arabians, strangers of Rome, and all of those other places. They were all gathered because they had come for the feast of the Passover. So I just need you to understand that on that day, when they heard the gospel that was preached by Peter and the rest of the apostles, they had 12 of them, because remember, they replaced Judah, who had uh, uh, deceived Jesus, who went and hung himself, uh -huh, and, and they, the, the lots fell on Matthias, so once again, there were 12 apostles. So Peter and the rest of the apostles began to preach the word, and those that were there, they were pricked in their hearts, and when they heard the truth, when Peter said, you have taken by wicked hands, crucified and slain the Lord Jesus, then they asked Peter, men and brethren, what shall we do? Peter said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And on that day, there were some 3,000 souls who were added to the church. The Bible says, praising God and having favor, and the Lord adds to the church daily, such as should be saved. I'm Alan Jackson, and I'm inviting you. Join us again next week, if it's God's will, when the gospel truth will once again come your way, bring into you spiritual songs and hymns, and uh, the power of the spoken word of God. And just keep in mind that the saved are all added to the body of Christ. That's Acts 2.47. And this is a blood 